Happy Tottenham Day, folks, and if you are a Spurs fan and you do so happen to be watching this, I hate to rain on your parades, but this is not West Ham's biggest game of the week, actually, and we don't regard you lot as a very big club because there is more dust in your trophy cabinet right now than there is under my bed, and I ain't cleaned under the bed in about two months because uh, I keep forgetting. But still, this isn't even our biggest game of the week. We've already won our biggest game of the week and now we're just playing some other club in London that we always seem to have a little bit of a good track record against. Because you could bet your life savings, your mortgage, your life insurance, whatever, on a few things happening. You could bet that on Manuel Lanzini scoring or Mikel Antonio scoring or Tottenham bottling it. Up to you. But one thing is for sure, playing Spurs away is a West Ham fan's dream away day. And I wish I could have gone to this. But since I live 4,000 miles away from London, I can't and I couldn't book a flight. So, um, you know, I've got to save my money and stuff. I really want to see West Ham beat Spurs in the flesh because it'll be one of the most joyful days of my life. It's opposition uncovered time. And as you probably can tell, West Ham United's off to play Tottenham. Uh, it's a big London derby that always excites. Whether it be West Ham denying Spurs any chance of winning the league to the Lanzini moment from being 3-0 um, down after 45 minutes to tying it back to 3 or with 10 minutes left of the game. It's things that makes football special. Some of my favourite West Ham games have always come against Spurs. We beat them already once this season. We lost to them in the League Cup which is kind of our own undoing, but we still got a chance to beat them in the league. Let's put it this way. We have to get a result in this game because one of us is going to finish sixth. And I want that team to be us, of course, from West Ham. And this could be a very deciding game with very few fixtures remaining until the end of this campaign. Um, I think that if you look at both teams... Both of them have had strong seasons on paper, but Spurs are having a lot of issues off field. And I'll talk about it right now in, in a nutshell. So, in a nutshell, Spurs have had drama off the field. Not only did Harry Kane reportedly want to leave in the summer, but there's also stuff going on behind the scenes with Daniel Levy. I know fans are discontented with him with the fact that he didn't back Antonio Conte in January. Uh, fully, but there are a lot of issues going on at Spurs that maybe are not surfacing enough. And one thing is for sure, it doesn't seem to matter about who Spurs get as a manager. They've had Mourinho, they've got Conte in right now, they've had Pochettino. They've had very renowned managers in, yet none of them have really been able to steer the ship in the right direction. When Mourinho was in charge, Spurs were no longer really a joke club. People could take them seriously. Um, but that's all faded away this season. It's faded away because of poor results. Spurs started off the season with three wins on the bounce and three straight clean sheets. That all ended and then they proceeded to lose the next three games in a row, scoring once within those three losses. Um, when West Ham beat Spurs 1-0 at the London Stadium, it was the beginning of the end for Nuno Espirito Santo. He was later sacked and replaced by Antonio Conte. Conte is one of Europe's best managers. He's won silverware in both Italy and England. He seemed like a very informed choice for a manager. And things did improve under him. I have to say, things did improve under him. And Spurs... Didn't lose a game until January the 23rd, which they then lost again three in a row, and everyone was starting to go into a meltdown, especially as Uvin Uzin was shouting, oh my days, blood, at the team because they were being so crap. The guys from We Are Tottenham TV, let's talk about them for a minute. Those guys at We Are Tottenham TV who always count the chickens and end up looking like fools when... Some team does them over and everyone starts singing Tottenham, get battered everywhere they go, which is like my new favourite song right now, because it's true. Um, you know, Spurs got a little bit of a high up because they beat Man City 3-2, but then lost to Burnley. Lost to Manchester United recently, but beats Brighton. So there's no real 
consistency in this Spurs team. There's no consistency in results. And it seems like every time Spurs lose, it's, well, funny to me. And also, they're losing to very poor teams. And they have done season loss to Burnley, like I just said. Um, they lost to Southampton, who have now vastly improved. And they lost to London rivals in Chelsea. It's not been good for them. It's been hard on them. There's a lot of unsettlement with the fans of Daniel Levy, like I mentioned earlier. They're not keen on him. And if they don't get European football, things will be very sour. I'm surprised Conte hasn't walked out on them, in all honesty. I think he would have done so after January. He should have walked out when he had the chance, but he didn't do it. He stayed on, which is a big commitment. And I uh, suppose just wants to stick by everything. As for my three players to watch... First up, as per usual in these videos, has to be Sonny, Song Hoon Min. Because he's different gravy. The guy is just an absolute beast of a forward. A real weapon on that team. He's a goal scorer, a sister, pacey, fantastic winger. And I really do like Sonny a lot. Up next is a newcomer. Swedish forward, Dejan Kulosevsky, who tends to play as an attacking midfielder, but he can play as a winger as well. He's actually made a difference to the team. I have to say, he's been a provider alongside Sun. And he's been giving Harry Kane a lot of service. Um, he plays direct passes. He likes to play very centrally in a number 10 role, um, Kulosevsky. And really good piece of business to get him in. I think he's a, yeah, a very good player. And also, the third player I'm going to talk about is no other than Hugo Lloris. Because I think he's one of the best goalkeepers in the world still. Um, he's been a very loyal servant to Spurs. I remember when he was playing at Lyon, and he was an excellent player. And we've got to play Lyon, actually, in the um, Europa League soon. I think Lloris has proven to be one of the best goalkeepers in Europe and the world. He's won a World Cup as well. He's a starter for the France national team. Spurs have been very lucky to have him. Um, and just sort of side note while I talk about players. Christian Romero needs to learn his lesson and stop being big-mouthed guy from Buenos Aires. Okay? In the game at the London Stadium, he went up to Pablo Fornas and shouted in his face. He did it against Man United. What happened in both games? Spurs lost. So, zip it. As for a player who played for both, well... Ryan Fredericks started his career off at Spurs, although he never got game time. He was part of Spurs' academy, came up through their system, and spent a lot of time on loan out to championship clubs. And signed with Fulham, where he was able to get a move that could stabilise his career and give him a team that he could be with in the long run. And after Fulham's promotion to the Premier League in 2018, he joined West Ham on a free transfer. As for my score prediction in this game... I really want to say West Ham win. I really do. Because I'd love it. And I'm being... Um, I'm not being impartial when I say it. Because I've got to say it right now. I want to go 2-0 West Ham. If we are able to contain Spurs. If we're able to limit them. Well, we never know what to expect in these games. But I expect something fun to happen. I'm going to say 2-0 West Ham. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Opposition Uncovered. If you liked the video, hit the like button and don't forget to sub for more content. Comment below as well because I like reading your comments and I've started replying to them a lot more as well. Take care, everybody, and I will see you all soon. Come on, you irons. Let's do this lot over.